Talk Nick Fans. That's right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today I will receive. Oh my God! This channel. I love this channel. Not but Nick's man, man. Uh, it's a great, 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 great honor uh, receiving in this channel. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the Nick Fans Brazil channel, Simeon Russo. Thank you, thank you. And you know, it's been so long. We talked back and forth about when we could schedule it and get it done. I'm glad we were finally able to get it done, man. Uh, and and it's all because my my schedule is so busy and so crazy. I'm all over the place all the time. You know what I mean? But I'm I'm glad we were able to get it done and make it happen. So I'm ready to talk some Knicks. Ah, man. Nick fans in Brazil like so much your channel. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, appreciate uh, it. So, and uh, for me, it's a, uh, just like I said, né? a great honor. Um, first of all, first of all, mm -hmm. can you introduce yourself for Brazilian fans? Yes. Uh, my name is Simeon Russell. Most people just call me Sim. The ladies in my family call me Simmy. But only the ladies oh. in my family can call me that. All right. <laughs> Nobody else can call me that. Just the ladies in my family. My wife calls me Simi. Uh, my aunts and, and cousins, lady aunts and, you know, lady cousins, uh, you know, they call me Simi. But, um, man, that's me. You know, I, just, I, I love the New York Knicks. I've been a New York Knicks fan since 1986. Now, of course, there's some people out there that's been Knicks fans longer than that, but that's around the time when I really started to pay attention to sports, right? The Knicks got Patrick Ewing and, and, and all of that. So, you know, I became a New York Knicks fan. Obviously, I'm from New York. I'm from upstate New York, you know, and um, yeah, man, I just, I, I, I once I became a Knicks fan, that was it for me. And I've been a diehard Knicks fan ever since, every step of the way. You know, there is no second team for me. You know, there is no, you know, I'm a Knicks fan, but my second team is this or that. No, there is no second team. I'm a New York Knicks fan through and through. That's about it. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I started the channel because actually I didn't, I didn't think about and say, here's why I'm going to start this channel. It didn't happen that way. Um, <laughs> I moved to Washington, D.C., right in like the year 2000 and no Knicks fans not many Knicks fans around well there's a lot of Knicks fans but I didn't know any at the yeah. time you know so I'm like okay looking for I need Knicks content I need the, the I need the Knicks and, and YouTube wasn't the way that it is now uh podcasting wasn't the way that it is now but I did I, I would listen to a podcast I would listen to Anthony MSG Right, and he kept me in touch with what's going on with the Knicks. And he had some great guests on there. Jada Kiss, rapper Jada Kiss, rapper Fabulous, Spike Lee, and all kinds of people on there. So, that you know, that was pretty dope. But I wanted more. So I started blogging. I made the blog, nothing but Knicks. I started blogging about the Knicks. You know, but my blog was a little bit different. I wasn't uh, just writing, you know, news to keep you updated about the Knicks. I was more writing stories about my experience with the new york knicks that's what my blog was about you know uh, about me and my son going to a game or watching a game or you know just different experiences that i have with the knicks that's that's what the blog was about and it was going well and i had you know a viewership people were watching it and reading the blog and stuff like that most of my blog traffic came from twitter at the time and so I was like, well, you know what? I'm getting a little bit of a name. Let me see what it takes to get a blue check on Twitter. This was a long time ago, 2016 or something like that. Because I had been to Nick's Media Day, you know, got a chance to interview some people at Media Day and, you know, a bunch of stuff like that. So I was like, you know, it's growing. Tried to get the blue check. My account gets erased. Somehow, uh -huh. some way, it's gone, gets erased. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. I called up Twitter. They said, we don't see the account anywhere. I'm like, shoosh, now I got to start all over. So I started my Twitter uh, uh, page all over again. 
but it didn't get the same. It didn't pick up steam as, as it did before. So I said, well, you know, my blog wasn't getting as many hits. So I said, let me see what's going on with uh, YouTube, this YouTube thing. And in 2017, I put out a video, put out one video and I got a good reaction. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, so I started doing the videos, start doing videos, doing videos. And like I said to you earlier, I would watch the game, do my reaction video. But by the time I edited the video and did all of this stuff, uh, the, the next game was, it was time to start preparing for the next game. So I was like, okay, I got to get these things out faster. Maybe I should just do it live. And so one day I was on travel and, you know, I didn't, so I didn't have my, my, my studio set up. I said, let me jump on my phone and just go live. And I, I started going live. I had like 70, 75 people on and I was ecstatic. I was like, holy cow, I had 70 people on watching me. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I and understand so I, you. Yeah. I was like, wow, I had 70 people. I was wow i couldn't believe it right so i was like okay this is what i'm gonna do from now on so then i just started going live after every game you know when the viewership continued to pick up and then i said to myself well let me see if i can make it look as if it was edited and you know add different things in and so i started to do the research on you know how to make it look professional as professional as possible you know and i started to pay attention to my speech patterns a little bit more and, and start to think of funny things I want to say and, and stuff like that. And then of course I upgraded my equipment, you know, and then boom, the channel just continued to grow, you know, and it continues to grow. Um, my goal for the channel though, has never really been to, you know, bring on a whole bunch of, you know, hotshot reporters, much respect to all of them. You know, it's no disrespect to them, but Mm -hmm. I always wanted the fans to be the authority. I wanted it to be a place for the fans to be able to express themselves uh, and, and and talk about the team, you know. So that's always been my focus for the channel. I do bring in reporters. A group and, of therapy, like, yeah, a therapy group. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's exactly what it is, a therapy group. You know what I mean? A therapy group, you know. But, you know, I do bring in reporters from time to time. You know to talk about the Knicks, and and I try to get in contact with you know people who maybe train the players or old coaches or things like that. Uh, but I try to keep the focus about the fans and the fans having a voice, and that's why on the channel you see that a, a lot of Knicks fans have become content creators on the channel. You know, and you know that's you know as I as it grew, that's kind of where my focus was. You know, I wanted to be about the fans being able to be the authority. You know, so that's and that's where we are today. Ah, man. Yeah, man. I like it. Uh, you talk so calm and so calm. Ah, man, I, I like it. <laughs> you know, I, 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 try, like I it. try to stay calm. It's hard to stay calm when I'm watching the Knicks play. <laughs> you know, that's one of the reasons why <laughs> I, I like, imagine it. You know, uh, you, you see people who stream during the game. I can't do it. I got to focus on the game and. You know, I do a lot of hollering and yelling and my dogs are running around and afraid, you know, like, what? why is he screaming? Why is he yelling? You know what I mean? Uh, uh -huh. but I try to stay calm when I'm in public. I try to stay yes. calm. Uh, man, uh, I, I sometimes in public, I, I, <laughs> I crazy. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> I, because I this team, man, this team, I love so much, but... You understand, you understand, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, I know, I know, man. It's it's hard not to, you know, just you know, go off the wall sometimes with this team. Even yeah. summer league, even watching the summer league games, I'm sitting there screaming, screaming and hollering. I'm like, it's a summer league game, but I can't help it. I love basketball so much, you know. Man, I hate to lose. I hate to lose. Me too. I Me I, too. I I don't care summer league, NBA. I don't care uh, street in basketball in streets. I don't care, man. I right. I hate to lose. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I hate to lose as well. You know, I'm a I'm a competitive person. Very competitive. Sin, uh, I have a curious about you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you you tell us about your uh, how start your passion uh, with the Knicks, uh, your channel. 
but uh, uh, basketball and basketball how start your passion with basket basketball uh it, it really actually my first love was boxing that Whoa. was my first love that was my first love really fact, yeah my <laughs> my mike tyson yeah mike tyson that's it right there my second video on my channel the first video i did like a a, a carmelo anthony uh highlight video that was the first video mm -hmm. i did but the first video of me speaking i told a story about right. how i became a basketball fan and mike tyson is part of the story whoa yeah mike tyson <laughs> is part of the story because i grew up in catskill new york well i was born in catskill new york and uh -huh. i lived there till i was you know a certain age and i bounced around i bounced around upstate new york uh, you know throughout my teenage years but i lived right next door to where he trained okay so every day after school i used to go up through you know a little alleyway and go to the gym where he trained and sit there and watch him train right he was huge he was huge there uh obviously i mean he's already he was huge worldwide but he was huge right and uh -huh. me some of my friends i had cousins there we would go to the gym and just watch him train they would let us jump rope they would let us hit the bag uh they would let us uh, you know play around with the weights but they would never let us get in the ring right so we'd be there we'd just hang out in the gym for like two hours you know uh his trainer uh -huh. kevin rooney would be there you know when tyson would be you know sparring working on the bag hitting the bag this that this and that so boxing was huge in catskill and one day i was at the gym late i was the last kid there and you know i was punching the speed bag and then i sat down there was a stage in the gym right two stages in the gym actually i sat down on one of the stages next to the trainer and i asked him i said how come you never let us get in the ring and he would always say you gotta learn how to defend yourself first right and then he asked me he said do you want to learn how to box i said yeah i want to learn how to box I would love to learn how to box. So he wrote a letter, and now this is Kevin Rooney, Kevin Rooney, Mike Tyson's trainer, one of, you know, one of his trainers. Uh huh. So he wrote a letter to my mother, right? Oh, and he knows my mother. The guy knows my mother. He, he wrote a letter to my mother, and he said, uh, "Can I train your son in boxing?" So I brought I brought the letter home. I didn't I didn't see what she said until the next day when I'm on my way back to the gym, and I get the letter, and I'm going through the alleyway to get there. And I open it up, and the letter says, "No, let your own son get beat up." It's, that's what it says. It says, "No, let your own son get beat up." And I was like, "Oh my God, he's not gonna let me train." And so, you know, after uh -huh. that, I continued to go to the gym, but then after that, I had to find something else to do. I started to play basketball at the boys and girls club. Uh, but where I really, really fell in love with basketball is when I lived in Utica, New York. Um, it was a really rough part of my life like it was a really yeah. rough part of my life you know and you know my mother had some some things going on so we were really really we were really broke and you know it was stressful you know when things mm -hmm. were happening in the house I don't want to get too deep into it you know I'm gonna say that one day I'm gonna have a you know I have some content planned around it uh, but basketball was the only thing that could allow me to escape you know so no matter what I, I could depend on basketball so every day i'd go to the basketball court in winter time i'd shovel off the basketball court play before school go to school practice you know play games whatever come back home play basketball I'd, and i'd be at the court until midnight because I, I needed to escape whatever was happening at home at that time in my life you know so basketball was everything for me you know it, it was so basketball became like my best friend well, you know great and and, and and so that's where my passion came for basketball and that's the reason why i coach now because i understand what basketball how basketball can be an outlet not just basketball but every sport yes you know, i understand I how it can be an outlet for young men and women and so when i coach i use it as a tool to teach life lessons, to help you, to help these children that I work with uh, build habits that are going to last for the remainder of their life. You know what I mean? Uh, because, you know, that's something that basketball did for me. So 
that's where my passion for basketball came. I super understand. Man, in, in school, I just play well basketball. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> in Brazil, yeah. do you know? Brazil loves soccer. Man, Brazil uh -huh. loves soccer. Right. But me in soccer, oh, Randall. No, okay. Randall not. <laughs> Alfred Payton. Alfred, Alfred Payton. That might be that's, that, that might be worse than Randall. <laughs> Worst. <laughs> At least for Knicks fans, it is. <laughs> in basketball, né? I play better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sim. Um, mm -hmm. what's your favorite uh player uh all the time in X for you? Oh what's Patrick uh, Ewing. Patrick Ewing. Me. Patrick ah. Ewing is my guy. You know what I mean? Uh I love Patrick Ewing. You know, oh I'm when I was young, I was you know, I, I could never afford a pair of his sneakers. So when I got older, I was and, and they brought him back, you know, for a while. You, you couldn't buy Patrick Ewing's for a while. Um, but then they brought him back some years ago. They brought him back, and now I've been buying Patrick Ewing's, man. Uh, yeah. so I'm so glad to be able to buy him, yeah. But yeah, Patrick Ewing, you know, Patrick Ewing is my guy, man. I like you, you more now. I like you more. Now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, yeah, let's see. Let's talk now about uh new york knicks mm -hmm. let's talk um first of all i want your opinion uh what's your expectations about uh jalen brunson uh i expect jalen brunson to come in and be the leader of the team hands down the leader right uh i want yes. him to be the primary ball handler which i don't think there's any doubt about i think he will be Uh, I want him to have the connection with Tom Thibodeau, right? So that mm -hmm. whatever Tom Thibodeau was thinking, Jalen Brunson is thinking the same things on the floor. You know, am I, I'm not worried about, you know, does he score 21 points a game? And, and I'm not worried about those kind of numbers. I want him to be the leader. And uh, if he's the leader, I want him to play that Chris Paul role. And I think it's going to benefit this team and benefit everybody on the team. And I think this team is going to be a lot better because of Jalen Brunson. And it doesn't happen. Obviously, he's going to score and he's going to get assists. And he's, you know, he's going to put up stats. Yes. But I think his presence and what he brings to the team is going to go well beyond just stats. You know, I think it's it's going to just the culture of the team. And then having it, so many games last year, the Knicks lost because down the stretch, they did not have a decision maker. And I think I like that, PG, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and, and that's what I think Jalen Brunson is going to bring to the team. Yes. He's going to bring that. Yep. Man, I like Alec Burks, okay? But uh, Alec Burks, PG, no, no, no. Right. Right. <laughs> he's, not, he's not a point guard. And Alec Burks on yes. a championship level team is a really, really good player that you can yes. use all over the court and you can use them at the point guard spot in a pinch, right? When, mm -hmm. when as the very last resort and you know, okay, we got to go to Alec Burks, you know, uh, but he's a guy, he's, he's going to help out. Um, you know, where is he now? I forgot where he went to. Where did he get traded to Detroit, right? Yes. Okay. Detroit, right? Detroit, 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 yeah. Detroit, Detroit. Detroit. I don't know how much. I mean, I, I'm assuming that Detroit is going to use him. You know, he's going to—he's a good vet. I can see Alec Burks though being a really good piece on a championship level team, and, and, and a important piece on the championship level team. I like Alec Burks. I just don't like him at the point guard spot. You know? <laughs> Me too. Me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I I like uh, talk with you uh, uh, about another guy, né? Uh, Uh, Isaiah Hartenstein. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, an, uh, it's a new center né? Uh, mm -hmm. coming to the Knicks. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your opinion? What's your expe expectations too né? about this center? Né? Yeah, I think that he's going to play a huge role for the Knicks, right? I think he's going to allow the offense or help the offense to open up. Because with mm -hmm. Mitchell Robinson, and no hate towards Mitchell Robinson, I like Mitchell Robinson. But he can't shoot the ball. And he 
you know, he doesn't have any offensive skill set really besides catching catching an alley oop. Yes, Hartenstein has a little bit more of a skill set. He can shoot the ball a little bit. Uh, I, you know, he can put the ball on the floor. He's got a good basketball IQ. I think he's going to be really, really key for the Knicks in spreading the floor and helping the offense to grow and uh, to be able to utilize players more. I think it's going to help Julius Randle in a pick and roll when whenever they play mm-hmm. together. It's going to help Obi Toppin in a pick and roll scenario. The, you know, if he's playing on the floor with Obi Toppin and Hartenstein is out on the perimeter taking away any big man, Obi Toppin is going to have open, like, you know, it's, it's going to be an I open agree. field at the rim for Obi Toppin to catch dunks. You know what I mean? So I think it's going to be huge for the Knicks to have Hartenstein. Ah, I like Barrett there. too, nah? man. Barrett you like, nah? infiltrations. I, I, exactly, uh, exactly. You know what I mean? Because when these guys, when Mitchell Robinson is in the game, he's always standing, and it's not his fault, this is where he's taught to stand. He's always standing in what's called the dunker spot, waiting for somebody to dip it off to him so he can, so he can s- send it home. But that means there's a big man there. There's a center there waiting to block, waiting to rotate over and block the shot or or defend whoever's mm-hmm. penetrating to the basket. So now when you got Hartenstein out on the perimeter, that center, they can't come so far off of Hartenstein, you know, where they're defending the paint. Because then when the ball gets kicked out, he can shoot it. And he can put it on the floor and go past the guy if they're closing out too hard. You know, so mm-hmm. he's going to open up. He's going to help open up the offense a lot. And I'm looking yes, forward to seeing him out there. Man, uh, you, you're talking uh, about uh, Isaiah. Uh, it's a good uh, in three points. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hear I hear in Brazil about uh, Mitchell Robinson training three points. <laughs> Man, Mitchell Robinson uh, training free throws first. Okay. Right. Training free throws first okay <laughs> no you, i hear, hear I mean, about the history he, he shot like 40 something percent last year from the free throw line uh i mean i i just don't think mitchell robinson is ever going to be a three-point shooter i know when he first came into the league people thought maybe he could be and yes. you know in practice it's easy to do it without defense there without pressure there without somebody closing out on you or, or without having the speed of the game it's much more difficult to do it in the game yes. when you do have that pressure and that speed and you got 20,000 people watching and all that stuff that goes along with it. And you have to coach breathing down your neck. Like if you miss this three pointer that you pulled, you know, you uh-huh. might be sitting next to me getting splinters. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it's, it's different, you know, and I just don't think Mitchell Robinson has the confidence right now to really shoot those yes. shots in the game. Yes, I, I agree. I agree with you. Uh, and I want uh, an opinion, your opinion, about R.J. Barrett. In your opinion, Sam, uh, mm-hmm. R.J. Barrett can be a uh, all-star, in your opinion, or not? Oh, man. It, it's, it's tough <laughs> to say with R.J., you know, if he can be the number one guy on the team. I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, I, I I think I've seen a lot of growth from RJ, but there's a lot more. When you look at guys who are number one, they have so many scoring, so many weapons in their arsenal to score the basketball. You know, and, and RJ doesn't have those weapons right now. You know, now I know he's a hard worker. Um, He's a smart smart guy, smart basketball player. So I don't put it past him to continue to build his basketball skill set. But I just don't know if he has, uh, let me say this. I don't think he has the talent of, or the athleticism of a guy like a John Morant or Donovan Mitchell or those type of guys. Mm -hmm. But he has a hell of a lot of heart, I think. You know, and that can go a long way. You see Jalen Brunson, right? He doesn't have the speed. He doesn't have the jumping ability. He doesn't have all height. of that athleticism, <laughs> the height, but he's got a heck of a lot of heart. And I think RJ has the same thing. And that heart can go a long way to turning you into yes. a star. Look at Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce, he didn't have that kind of athleticism or speed or 
jumping ability and all of that. And he still became a superstar. So, you know, I yes. hold out hope that RJ Barrett has the Paul Pierce factor. Understand, man. Uh, I, I just I, don't. I, I just I, don't want. I just don't want RJ to be like Paul Pierce was. I don't want RJ to be, <laughs> you know, at a party dancing around, taking videos with a bunch of strippers there and everything, and putting it on. <laughs> he's gonna do it, but don't put it on video. I know he's yes. gonna do it. You know, I'm pretty sure he's gonna do it. He's a young man. Don't put it on yeah. video like Paul Pierce did, though. <laughs> uh, man, uh, I am suspect. Uh, talking about RJ Barrett, like uh, I am your fan, okay? But I am super fan about RJ Barrett. Oh, uh, I, 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 I need. Go. Uh, do I need? There you go. There you go. <laughs> Man, oh, I have Funko, man. Funko. Okay. Funko. <laughs> <laughs> do uh, I? I. Mm, I can't need more. Uh, talk more about RJ Barrett. Really, man. In my opinion, I super believe in RJ Barrett, but. But I understand uh, in the next season, RJ Barrett needs uh, proofs uh, so many for, né? for so many people, uh, RJ Barrett can be uh, all star in the future, né? in the next season. But, mm -hmm. but man, I, I, I really believe, né? I really believe in this guy, but I, I know né? RJ Barrett needs uh, proof. Né? The uh, this, né? I, I believe RJ Barrett needs né? Uh, proofs in, in, in a court. Né? Um, yeah, I, you I, know, I, the thing I say, I do, you know, there's a lot of people that believe that feel like RJ Barrett, you know, this is the year that he really has to prove that he's a star. Um, I don't know if he has to prove it this year coming up. I just oh, want you're him, right. No, you're right. You're right. I just right. want him to continue to take steps forward and build and get better and better and better and better. You know, like the, the basketball development, you're not going to – some guys just have this natural talent. Yes. Other guys got to work at building their skill. Yes. You know, and RJ is one of the guys that has to work on building his skill, you know, and – eventually you know reaching reaching the top you know so i'm not looking forward to him taking this big leap and now he's averaging 25 points per game i'm not worried about that i'm just worried about the knicks winning and him being a part of the knicks winning and i and i believe he will be a part of it you know and if this year like last year he averaged 20 points per game 20 on the dot 20 points per mm -hmm. game but his efficiency wasn't good yeah if he averaged this year if he averaged 20 points per game again but his efficiency was good I'm happy with that. I don't need him to go up to 23. I just want his efficiency to be good and his decision making. Uh, to be good. Free, free throw too. Free throw. You need uh, yeah, RJ free throws to be good, right? Uh, yes. His his defense to be good. Not letting guys cut back door on him. You know, those things. So I'm not expecting him or feel like that he has to take a super uh. duper leap forward. You know, and, and all of a sudden be 23 points per game. I don't think he has to do that for the Knicks to win. Man, man, you're you're my teacher, man, about the Knicks, man. I super agree. Ah, you man, ah, man. I'm that. so happy. So, ha so happy, man. So happy bring it you to see. you in this channel, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Super agree. Uh, and uh, Julius Randle, man. Julius Randle. Julius Randle. Do you know, nah, uh, uh, Julius Randle? In the last season, eh? uh, in your opinion, Julius Randle uh, can be, uh, will be better in the, in the next I season? I think he will. I think he'll be better. Um, last year was the lowest shooting year that he's had in his career. He never shot that bad before. He shot like 41% from the field. Julius Randle's never shot that bad. I think he's going to rebound, right? He shot 41% and still averaged 20 points, 10 rebounds a game for the most part, right? If Julius yes. Randle shoots efficiently from the field, and I mean just 45% from the field, he's going to average 22 to 23 points a game by just shooting efficiently from the field. 
He could shoot the same three-point percentage, but shoot 45% from the field instead of 41% from the field, and he's going to average 22 to 23 points per game. And mm-hmm. as much as people get mad at Julius Randle, he's only shoot – last year he shot the ball like 15 to 16 times a game. That's not a lot, right? You have guys, you know, shooting 21, 22 times a game. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, so I think that Julius Randle is going to have a comeback year. Uh, I think that he – I'm hoping that he learned his lesson, you know, about messing – I don't want to say messing, but dealing with the fans and just say, I'm, I'm going to shut my mouth and play ball, you know. And whatever was going on with Julius Randle, hopefully he's – you know, he can uh, – I'm going to tell you what I think. And this is just uh-huh. my opinion, right? Yes. I think that Julius Randle um, – okay, so his first year with the Knicks was his first time – kind of like like being really being one of the primary players he was behind ad when he was with the pelicans uh he came to the knicks for half the season he was behind marcus morris marcus morris was the guy right then marcus morris gets traded now it's on julius randall you know and, and that's an adjustment for him because he was never in that situation then his second year with the knicks i came back and had obviously an all nba season but that comes with some responsibility now mm-hmm. because now all I, like, like really, truly all eyes are on you, not just from the fan standpoint, but other teams, other teams are now planning for you. You are the guy we got to get the ball out of, you know, we got to get the ball out of your hands, you know? So now you get double and triple teamed. And for a guy who's never dealt with that. Yeah. What am I going to no, do? I agree. No, no, so I think there's some learning curves. People who look at because Julius Randle's been in the league for a while, like seven years, you know, uh, and, you know, he's 27 years old and they're like, well, you know, he, he, he doesn't have to learn anymore, but he, he's still he's still learning as a basketball player. He may not get faster. He may not get a lot. And actually, he's just reaching his prime, right? 28 to 32 is like your prime years. So he's mm-hmm. just reaching his prime. Uh but there's still a lot for him to learn as far as being one of the primary players on the team, which is the reason why I hold out hope that Julius Randle continues to get better. Uh, maybe not physically like faster and stronger, but upstairs, you know, and sometimes it takes, sometimes you got to go through the fire to learn some, you know, and he went through the fire last year. <laughs> he went through the fire. And now this is the time, and I know a lot of people don't want Julius Randle. They're like, get him out of here. He's negative, da 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 But I think you got to give him a chance to rebound, not just with his mm-hmm. numbers, but here. Yes. And if you can't rebound upstairs, now is when I think you start to say, okay, we had enough. It's time to go. But if he can rebound upstairs, I think he can be a hell of a basketball player. And now with a guy like Jalen Brunson there, who he's going to respect, mm-hmm. I think it's going to change everything. I think it's going to change everything with Julius Randle. He no longer has to bear the brunt of the responsibility, right? He no longer yes. is the guy that's responsible. It's now Jalen Brunson. He's the guy that's responsible on the floor. It's going to take a load off of Julius Randle, and I think we're going to see a different Julius Randle this year. Uh, uh, I think Julius Randle is um, uh, it's uh, very slow nah, with the ball, mm-hmm. uh, very slow with the ball. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson, nah, uh, it's, it's more fast, nah, right, uh, right, with the ball. Uh, right. And uh, I hate uh, Julius Randle uh, when makes uh, decisions in in the, in the game. Uh, Few seconds ball with uh, Julius Randle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right. I hate right. man. I hate less less seconds. Julius Randle with the ball, man. Man. Yeah, and, and, and that's where Jalen Brunson is going to have the ball in his hands. Uh-huh. And then, and then, you know, I don't know how you feel about Carmelo, but if the Knicks trade uh-huh. for Donovan Mitchell. Yes. I would hate for Obi Toppin to leave. I would, I, I really would. I, I wouldn't want Obi Toppin to go, but you know, yeah. it, it, sometimes it's a necessary. You know, you got to give up something to get something. And yeah, if Obi you, Toppin you did want. go, you know, if Donovan Mitchell comes and Obi Toppin leaves and goes to Utah, I would love for the Knicks to bring Carmelo Anthony in. Uh, it, Melo, Jalen Brunson, 
Donovan Mitchell, it changes the seriousness. It changes so much upstairs about this basketball team. And, uh, you know, I you talk about seeing a different Julius Randle, you see a totally different Julius Randle. You got to have guys around. But someone mm -hmm. like Julius Randle, he needs to have some guys around that he that he looks up to. You know what I mean? Like, he was mm -hmm. the guy on the team that everybody else was looking up to. He needs some guys to look up to. I don't know if he, if he had that kind of a relationship with Rose or Taj because they're not guys that are going to be that vocal, especially Rose. But a guy like Melo, it's not going to be vocal, but you know that's Melo. You know what I mean? Like, that's mm -hmm. Carmelo Anthony. You're not... You know, you're not going to say anything. You're not going to disrespect Melo. You're not going to, you know, <laughs> if Melo says something, you're going to be like, all right, I got it. You know what I mean? Um, uh -huh. and then you got Jalen Brunson, who, you know, he's a serious guy. And then Rick Brunson is there. I think Rick Brunson is going to make a whole heck of a lot of difference in that locker room. Jalen Brunson's dad, as an assistant coach, you know, he's a tough character, you know? Yes. And um, Julius Randle is going to respect that. I think we're going to see something different this year from Julius Randle. Uh, Carmelo Anthony, né? Uh, it's a great opportunity uh, to bring. Uh, um, I I forgot this word, man. Uh, Carmelo Anthony, it's it's very important uh, from the Knicks with uh, the energy, passion. Uh, mm -hmm. So many Knicks fans loves uh, Carmelo Anthony. That's right. Uh, maybe maybe the last. Uh, I do, I do. <laughs> forgive my English. Uh, uh, this team, man, Carmelo Anthony. In Brazil, uh, so so many people start né, uh, like Nick fans because uh, Carmelo because Anthony Mello. playing. Because uh, right. Because Melo. Né? Right. Because it's of very Mello. important from, from yeah. Steam marketing, uh, from the Steam. I want to see, sorry, I want to uh, talk, I, I talk about marketing. I want to talk with you about this rumor, the great rumor né, in, the, in this off season, man. I want uh, your opinion about this rumor with uh, Spider, né? Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your opinion né, in this case? Uh, do, you, do you think uh, Donovan Mitchell comes to the Knicks, né, or not? Talk, talk from Brazilians about your opinion. My opinion, I think that Donovan Mitchell is going to end up a Nick. I do. I, I, I think that he wants to be in New York, and obviously yes. the Knicks want him. Uh, and right now it's a, a game between Utah and the Knicks, you know, a, a negotiating game. Let's put it like this, right? And, 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 I said this in a tweet, right? I said this in a tweet. Look at the way that the Knicks got Jalen Brunson, okay? Mm -hmm. His They hired his dad, right? They yes. hired his dad. Yes. Um, He has a relationship with Leon Rose. Leon mm -hmm. Rose. Leon Rose used to be his father's agent. Leon Rose used to be Jalen Brunson's agent. And now Leon Rose's son is Jalen Brunson's agent, okay? Rick mm -hmm. Brunson, Jalen Brunson's dad, used to uh, coach with uh, Tom Thibodeau, and he also used to coach under Tom Thibodeau, or, or he used to be a player under Tom Thibodeau. So all of these connections are there. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at Donovan Mitchell. Johnny Bryant. Used to be a Utah Jazz assistant coach. He's now coach with the New York Knicks. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. I can't think of the guy's name. I can't think of his name. Oh, Walt Perrin. Used to be a scout for the Utah Jazz. He was the guy who pushed the Utah Jazz to draft Donovan Mitchell. He basically put all of his cards on the table, all of his chips on the table, and said, this is the guy for you to get. Right? He went to bat for Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell knows this. The Knicks mm -hmm. now have Walt Perrin as a scout in the front office. Jalen Brunson is friends with, I think it's Eric Pascal, who is very good friends with Donovan Mitchell. So there's a connection there. 
Leon Rose used to be Donovan Mitchell's agent. There's obviously a connection there. Donovan Mitchell is part of CAA, right? There's that connection. You already know the Knicks get a lot of CAA guys. They sign a lot of CAA guys. Obviously, Donovan Mitchell's dad works for the New York Mets. Donovan Mitchell's from New York. Just like with Jalen Brunson, the connections are there. The connections are there with Donovan Mitchell. And I think it's going to happen. Just a matter of time, I think. I do think it's going to happen. I could be wrong, of course, but I think it was, I think it's been the plan for a while to get Donovan Mitchell, right? Yes. Uh, obviously, you know, there's, you know, they got Walt Perrin, like I said, from the Utah Jazz. They got Johnny Bryant from the Utah Jazz, and they could hear from them. This is what's going on. Donovan Mitchell may not be as happy as you think. He might be the guy to to try to go get. You know, now mm-hmm. the relationships are there. Um, I feel like they've been planning for this for a very long time. And what we've seen the Knicks do during draft night, uh, when they collected all of these draft picks, they collected them for Donovan Mitchell, in my opinion. They didn't collect them. You know, obviously it's going to be said, hey, we got these picks, so if, if a star becomes available, we're going to go get them. Huh? They did it for Donovan Mitchell. I agree. You I know, agree. So I, I they've been agree. preparing for this, and I think they also feel like, and I was just on the show with, with Uncle Fulio, and he said, you know, the Knicks have to get this done. And I, I kind of agree with him. You know, the Knicks been preparing for this. Mm-hmm. They've been, you know, they got to get it done. Sin, uh, I imagine it. Uh, then you ain't. Uh, Leon Rose. So, yeah. Danny Ainge, it's tough not, guy to no, deal with. Uh, no, it's now, uh, it's just it, man. Uh, Danny Ainge, uh, it's a smart guy. It's smart yeah. guy. But Leon yeah. Rose uh, proved uh, the smartest too, man. Uh, in the past, uh, other GM accepted uh, the first, the first uh, option trade. Uh, I don't agree the first option. Uh, six, uh, six picks. No? Uh, la, uh, yes. Uh, for with more Obi Topping, Emmanuel Kikley, Kenton Grimes, and Miles McBride. But uh, I, I think, man, uh, the price, the price, right. the question, the question, uh, the price the Knicks pay in the this negotiation man uh so many so many Brazilian scenes ask me to me <laughs> every days <laughs> every day uh, mm-hmm. uh about Donovan Mitchell uh ah, Victor uh spider comes spider comes man <laughs> uh uh this negotiation I doubt I doubt uh it's a uh, fast negotiation. It's a slow negotiation. Yeah. Uh, uh, because Danny, uh, Danny Ainge né, from Utah and Leon Rose from New York Knicks. Uh, uh, Utah and Knicks uh, have uh, your interests right. né, and, uh, and, in this yeah. negotiation. And look, Leon Rose being a former agent, he knows how to negotiate. That's a major part of his job as an agent is to negotiate, Mm -hmm. right? So he understands everything you need to understand about negotiating in the NBA, Mm -hmm. you know? So he's not just going to roll over to Danny Ainge because it's Danny Ainge, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure the two have had many dealings, right? You know, he, Danny Ainge has been a coach in the front office etc leon rose has been an agent for years both of them been in the nba circle for years they know who each other are uh and they have uh, been around each other they both know what to expect because i'm pretty sure this is not the first time that they've had to, to negotiate with one another it's not the but first in time your, uh, i'm sorry uh but sin in your opinion what's the price in your opinion in this negotiation uh how many picks uh how players uh in your opinion mm-hmm. uh 
New York Knicks make a uh, deal uh, with Utah? In your Man. opinion? Uh, let me see. I think <laughs> that... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that the Knicks are going to end up giving up a lot of picks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they probably don't want to, right? But I think that they will end up giving up a lot of picks. One, because Utah wants a lot of picks. Mm -hmm. And two, it's the Knicks, the Knicks, they don't want to bring in Donovan Mitchell and not be a competitive team. They mm -hmm. want to be competitive, right? Yes. So what's one of the best ways to do it is by keeping as many players as possible. So I don't think, I don't think the Knicks and Utah are really negotiating much about the picks. I think the Knicks are going to give them picks. I think it's about the players. Mm -hmm. And the Knicks yes. trying to keep as many players as possible so that they can field a good basketball team. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, so I, and, and still have a future. Right. I mean, not that you don't have a future with Donovan Mitchell because he's only 25, but you know, if you can, if you can, trade away picks and keep young players now you got an entire team full of young guys that can really grow together you know guys i mean think about it if, if donovan mitchell comes to the knicks he's going to be the starting shooting guard uh then you'll have Jalen brunson the starting point guard both of those guys are 25. rj barrett would be the starting three he's 22. mitchell robinson would be the starting five He's 24, and then Julius yes. Randle would be the starting power forward, and he's 27. 20, 27, 28, and I. Yeah, I think he's going to turn 28 when it's after the season starts or something like that. Yes, yes. Right? So you're talking about a fairly young basketball team. And then on your mm -hmm. bench, you know, who knows what happens with players, but you would still have a bunch of young guys on the bench too. And I mm -hmm. think that's what they're trying to do, the Knicks, you know, trying to – save a couple of the young guys you know you know and, and, you know they probably want to try to move on from evan fournier include him in the package and you know maybe even derrick rose and then you know one or two young guys mm -hmm. you know so that they still keep you know three or four young guys even hartenstein is 25 years old so the knicks you know they have young guys and i think they want to keep young guys you know, and, and if they can, you know, if they can trade away a couple, you know, they only got two vets on the team now. If they could trade away those two vets or one of those guys and, you know, packaged with a couple of young players, you know, it could work out, you know, so that they still have something left in the co cupboard so that they can compete. And I think that's what it's all about right now. Uh, but, but the, same, the question is uh, trade uh, a future. Uh, uh, with a, a, a present uh, winner, uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, can be um, uh, show the Knicks uh, uh, for the another All Stars players. All Star players uh, seen the Knicks with uh, Donovan Mitchell, Don uh, Knicks playing better uh, uh, can be good. To the Knicks in future, uh, I don't, I don't guess Knicks uh, comes to contender, okay? But right. uh, it's a begin, uh, a process uh, for from the Knicks uh, with these players, Jalen Brunson, Barrett, uh, uh, man, uh, Utah, Utah, Donovan Mitchell come to the Knicks, Knicks uh, probably, uh, Obi Toppin. Yeah, I, I, I hear so much about this. Saying Utah wants Obi Toppin, Kenton Grimes, right? Right, uh, right. You know, and uh, and you know, if I was the Utah Jazz, I would want as many young players as possible as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and young players on short contracts, not young players on long contracts, you know, because they're mm -hmm. rebuilding, they're starting from the beginning. You know, and so you don't want long contracts that's going to bog you down. You want to have short contracts and you want to have guys who could potentially be rotation players. You know, I'll stop short of saying it there. They could potentially be rotation players, you know. So, 
uh, yeah, it would be it's smart of Utah to try to get as many of those young players as possible. Yeah, but uh, listen, I think I think that the Knicks they get Donovan Mitchell. I think they'll be. I think they'll be competitive. I I do not think it's going to make them a championship team. They're still going to have to build around Donovan Mitchell, yes. right? Uh, yes. It's going to be other pieces that they need to add, which is one of the reasons why they still want to keep some young players and try to save a few draft picks so that they can make trades, future trades, right? Mm-hmm. To to build the team. So bringing in Donovan Mitchell doesn't mean the Knicks are going to be. I think they'll play. They're a playoff team. If you have Donovan Mitchell, R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle, and Jalen Brunson, I think that's a playoff team. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I think I, it's a playoff team. You're... Mitchell Robinson, Mitchell Robinson. I think that's a playoff team. But you're gonna yes. need more. Yes. Uh, but Donovan Mitchell uh, can be important to the Knicks in, in the, so many reasons. Now, uh, marketing, marketing from the Knicks, uh, Marvel <laughs> with the Knicks, Spider come to, uh, come back to New York. Now, uh, it's the relation, now, Spider Miles Morales, now, uh, yeah. with the Knicks. Uh, do you understand? Um, uh, Donovan Mitchell. Another stars seeing this player uh, in Brazil, man. Uh, I I I told you, na, in backstage, I am Nick fan since '92, but mm-hmm. uh, in 19 years, Knicks uh, <laughs> uh, giant, na, in, in this league. Okay. Now, uh-huh. na, in Brazil, Knicks uh, people and channels um, talking more about Golden State Warriors. Um, um another teams right uh, milwaukee bucks right. don't, don't talk uh so much about the knicks when talk about the knicks uh it's jokes i don't know with the knicks man <laughs> i don't don't like it <laughs> but right. in brazil uh i understand uh, knicks a uh, long time now uh, uh it uh, has a, a great thing now uh, in, in the nba uh I see uh, in the last weeks in Brazil, uh, so many channels talking about the Knicks, about this rumor, okay? Uh, it's, uh, Donovan Mitchell, it's very important for, uh, from the Knicks in so many reasons. Uh, uh, the image, uh, Knicks fans oh, don't has a, a great player, oh, since Carmelo, in my opinion, since Carmelo, since Carmelo. Right. right, right. I mean, right. obviously, Julius Randle had the one season, um, but they haven't had a consistently great player, and they need one. Do you understand? I I see uh, Donovan Mitchell can be important about uh, about these these reasons. No, no, don't just uh, with the team, but out. Uh, from Madison Square Garden, uh, Donovan Mitchell can be important uh, to the Knicks. Uh, do you understand? Um, I and uh, I, I want uh, your opinion. And uh, mm-hmm. the Knicks uh, uh, in the in the next season, what's your expectation with this team? Uh, uh, with Donovan Mitchell and out uh, Donovan Mitchell in this team. Yeah. Uh, so I'll start with without Donovan, Donovan Mitchell, with the team they have right now, I expect them to be 500 or better. It still may not mean that they make the play in or the playoffs, but I expect them to be 500 or better, right? You don't go out and get Don, uh, Jalen Brunson, pay this money for Jalen Brunson, and you're not going to get better. So uh, me, I'm, I won't be happy with 37 wins again or 38 or 39 or 40. I want us to be 500 or better. With Donovan Mitchell, I'm expecting us to be a playoff team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and the, the last question, man, the last question. Uh, people uh, talking about high uh, from Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brunson. Uh, Donovan right. Mitchell comes to the Knicks, two uh, guards, nah, smalls. Oh. He, in your opinion, Donovan Mitchell playing together with uh, Jalen Brunson, 
uh, for you, uh, it's a it's a worst, or or in your opinion, it's a a good thing. Yeah. Um, and sorry about the little noise in the background. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> no, if you heard. No. I don't know if you heard that in the background. I apologize about that. <laughs> no, don't yeah. worry, man. I, um, I, I talk. I talk with you because uh, people are talking about defense. Defense. Yeah. This this team with uh, Jalen Brunson and Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's going to be some concern there because you know both guys are six one, and then you're you're talking about these guys being teammates for the next four to five years, right? So there's mm -hmm. going to be some concern at their height. You know, um, but one, I believe Hart can, you know, they may not have the best defensive skill in the world, but I believe Hart will, Cannon will take over. And then, you know, Donovan Mitchell is a guy that can score at will and on anyone. And the Knicks don't have that, and they need that. You know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. so I, I think that their heart and the offensive skill set will override any 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 uh, issues on defense. You know what I'm saying? So while there will be some concern, you know, I, I'm I'm not that worried about it because these guys are basketball players, and you need basketball players. Skills, you know. Skills are going to, it's not going to matter the height. You know, when yes. you have a certain skill level, it's not going to matter. You know what I mean? Uh, matter of fact, they may be so dynamic that teams are like, we got to match up with them. We got to go small so that we can compete with them. You know, they may force teams to play that way. So uh, I'm not as worried as a lot of people are. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that they'll be okay. No, I agree. Sin. Man, thank you so much. I appreciate man. you, man. Thank you so much, so much. Uh, I want to talk uh, talk with you about uh, in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. Nick Fans Brazil channel has a chance. Uh, I I I want make a trip uh, with Brazilians uh, from New York. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty Brazilians uh, at moment nah, yeah. with okay. me, That'd and nice. man, man. I want to meet you. I, want I would to love to, you. man. I would love to. I would love to. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah. Let uh, me know when it. You know. Let me know when you're planning to do it, and I'll see. Yeah. You know. You know. I, I'm assuming you'd be going to a Knicks game or something like that, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, so, in Metro Square Garden. Uh, uh, so many places in New York. I, yeah. I want. I want to see now nah, in the city, man. Uh, man, uh, it's very important. Uh, bring you and uh, another channels, journalist, nah? uh, because uh, Nick fans Brazil. I told you, nah? in Brazil, uh, soccer it's it's more uh, sport popular mm -hmm. in this country. Uh, New York Knicks in this moment, uh, it's not like uh, Golden State Warriors in this right. league. Right. Uh, but I, I believe in this team. I love New York Knicks. I love so much. I believe this team, y'all, yeah, the man. future. And, and let me uh, say, once they start, once they start winning, and if they're competing for a championship, there'll be there'll be Knicks fans all over everywhere. I mean, it's already Knicks fans all over the world, but there'll yes. be Knicks, you, you'll see Knicks fans popping out the seams. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's great again. Nick's great again. I believe, man. Yeah, yeah there you go, man. <laughs> and yeah. I saw, and uh, thank you so what? much. Thank you so much for your time uh, no in doubt. this channel. It's a great. Uh, I talk. I talking in the the begin uh, this interview. Uh, so great, great, great honor, sin. So great okay. honor for me and Brazilians. Uh, bring you in Nick fans Brazil channel. Thank you so thank much, you. Sam. Thank you. I appreciate you all. And it's an honor for me to be here, man. And uh, looking forward to you guys coming to New York so I can meet you. <laughs> and I hope I oh, see you in this channel and then other times. I hope oh, you, you, yeah. you will you enjoy. Nah, yeah, definitely. The, man. I had a great time. Great. Yeah. Well, that is doubt. Thank you. Thank you, man. I see you. Nah. Take care. It's in. All right. Talk to you later. Peace. See you later. Bye bye.
E aí pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Nick Fans Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! Are you down with